Hello, welcome to the first tutorial for 2010. I hope your Christmas and New Year festive season was wonderful. Today I'm going to digitise this bow and I'm going to use the wave effect to make it a little bit more interesting. And um, this bow and um, a lot of people ask me where do we get our artwork from if we haven't got something suitable in the software and there's clip art available on the internet and you can scan in pictures but just to make it a little bit easier for you I'm going to start putting some artwork up that I'll create myself and so for the first collection I'll put on my website is this one here and as you can see the bow is in there and I've got a lot of bows and ribbons so I'm going to try and keep it on a theme and um, you can buy this from my website for a dollar so it's cheap enough to get in and get some artwork and get started as you can see I've used this bow as a double bow and I've put it in as a single bow in a different color just to get you thinking outside the square and also later on use it in a border design now I've put copyright on these um, pieces of artwork so I'm quite happy for you to use them to create your designs and even if you sew the designs onto something else you can still sell the article with the design sewn on but I don't want you to sell the designs that you create from my artwork or sell or give away or share the artwork so I think that's fairly reasonable so um, if you're into um, making craft to sell that's fine um, just so long as you don't sell the designs because I'm going to put some of the designs up on my website too for those of you who don't have um, software to create them. Okay let's just close that now then and I've brought in the double bow into the software and we're going to um, start by we've loaded it in with the load picture from where we had it saved on our computer and we're just going to go straight to the design view we're not going to do any artwork preparation because we're going to manually design this uh, manually digitize this bow now the first thing to do is to look at your artwork and look at the layers of how it's built up as you can see the back parts of the ribbon are underneath the front parts and the last piece on top is the little knot so you need to think about that as you're digitizing I like to work from the bottom layer up but you can always move your objects later into an appropriate order if you want to so we're going to start by using our closed object tool and just our normal step fill but we need to choose a color and from your color management, um, from the color management tutorials, you'll learn how to load the colors you want into your color chart here. Um, but I'm going to use a, a lilac and a pink, and I'll need a paler pink as well. So um, there's three colors that I can see here because making this la the bottom ribbon a little bit darker differentiates it from the top bow so I'm going to go into my thread colors and grab myself another color while I'm doing that I'll just pause the video okay now if I drop my color menu down I've got a lilac a darker pink and a lighter pink so I'm going to start with the lilac for the highlights or the back of the ribbons here 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 and here and I will use it later for the knot so the first thing you need to do is zoom in so get your zoom tool zoom box and drag a box around the area you want to digitize now another thing you might have noticed is both sides of the ribbon are the same so we only need to digitize one side and then we'll duplicate the object so let's um, choose our closed object tool we've got our step fill and we've got the right color so let's just left click, right click, right click, right click. Now we're coming to a tighter corner so we need to put more clicks in there to get around that corner neatly. Lots of right clicks to make a curved line. And one there and press our enter button and that fills our area with our lilac fill. Let's just go to artistic view and we can see that quite clearly there and if we go to one to one we can see it's filled in the area there. 
Now to get the same on this side, I'm going to first use my um, wave tool to create the direction of the stitches. I've um, used the angle tool before, that changes them in a straight line, but we have a tool called the wave tool, which gives us a curved um, stitching. So I'm just going to go back to design view and select the area I've just digitized. It will turn pink and we're going to go to our object properties by right clicking. Our object properties box opens and if we come down to effects and we go to the others tab there's a section down here called wave effect. Just check that box and go apply. Now we can close that box now. Now if we go to our reshape object, it'll actually show us the curve of the wave. Let's zoom in and have a look at this. Okay, so I'll just hide the picture for a moment. You can see that the stitches are following the curve of that wave. Now we can move that wave. Okay, so we can move the end of it, we can make it tighter. It'll only let you go so far. If you go too tight and press enter, you'll see that Oh, it's actually done that. Sometimes it'll disappear on you. Um, and um, I've never actually had it succeed like that. That's good. Um, if you've got a curve that's not going to work, it will actually disappear on you and you have to start again. Um, but that's no big deal. Just um, go in and apply the wave effect and start again. But what I want to do is um, follow the shape of... this um, ribbon. If I bring the picture back you'll see what I mean. I want to have a shape that goes up here and curves around. Now I've got this end but it's curving into a big arc. We can actually add extra nodes on here. So if I right click there I've got another node and I can drag that down and flatten that curve out. Now we're getting more like the actual shape of the bow. And I'm reasonably happy with that so I'm going to hit enter and we'll go to artistic view and hide the picture and you can see the stitches stitch straight up here and then curve around it'll be more obvious when you stitch it out but you get the general idea okay so I'm happy with that we'll go back to the select tool and then click off to deselect and go back to one to one now I want this side the same as this side. So rather than try and re-digitize, all I need to do is select the object. I can either edit and duplicate, duplicate, or I can copy and paste. I'll duplicate in this case. And then I need to mirror image it. Mirror horizontal. And we'll see it's the right shape there. And then we just need to drag it across to here. As you can see, I've done this in artistic view. You could do it in the design view too. In fact, I'll go back to design view so you can see that the one that is selected that I'm actually moving. Now we could zoom right in and try and line this up exactly perfectly, although it's fairly close here. But what is more important is that these are actually um, aligned horizontally. So what we'll do is hold down our shift key click on this one and go down here and we've got our alignment tools and we want to align them align the centers horizontal so we'll just click on that and they must have been pretty close because they hardly moved at all but now I know that the center of these is on the same line 